Hi, this is guitarist Dennis Tafe, and I'm in my home studio, and I want to welcome you to Bargain Bin Gear. And this will be part one of a two-part series, possibly more than that. And what are we going to look at today? We're going to look at the Maris Enzo pedal. Now, I'd heard a lot about this pedal and did a lot of research online and watched YouTube videos and so on. And people are saying it's how horrible it is to control and to, um, you know, to access presets and so on and so on. And I, actually, my experience was a little different. Uh, but first let's talk about, uh, real quick, let's talk about price. Now this pedal new is about $299, so about $300. Okay, and what do you get for that $300? Well, it's basically a synthesizer pedal for guitar. So it really mimics a, um, a synthesizer basically and the best part about it is you don't need a MIDI pickup and that kind of stuff and uh, back in 19 I want to say 87 I think um, I had bought the Roland GPA that had just come out it's an effects processor and Somehow they had a little money uh, left over from that, and so somehow I got conned into buying this uh, MIDI Roland uh, guitar synthesizer, and it had this crappy GK1 pickup that you had to affix to your guitar, and uh, it was never done properly. You know, the thing would come off, and it, you know, not to mention damage the guitar. It was just a lousy deal. And you had two cables running out from your guitar. It's just a real pain in the butt. And back then, you know, I had, um, they stuck me with this real crummy little rack mount keyboard. And it was a Casio, I think. Just terrible. Just the whole deal was terrible. The tracking was terrible. The sound was terrible, you know, but it was novel back then, I guess. Um, now, they've come a long way since then, and one of the things that attracted me to this Maricenzo pedal is that there's no need to install any kind of pickup or that kind of thing, you know. Um, plus, I wasn't sure I wanted a, you know, a, a full-blown synthesizer, kind of like the Boss SY300, which is a lot pricier and new. I mean, it's about $700, right, for keyboard sounds. And I'm sorry, maybe it's just the YouTube videos, but from what I heard of it, um, it has those cheesy 80s kind of sounds. It sounds dated to me. It just didn't sound good, you know. Um, and then they came out with the Boss SY-1, right? Which was really, I was considering, ah, maybe that's a good idea. But one, it's mono. And two, no MIDI. So you've got to, you know, bend down and fiddle around with knobs all the time just to change your sound. Um, that's not the case here with the Marisenzo pedal. Now here's something funny. Uh, I was a little skeptical, and, and frankly, uh, when I ordered, I thought, oh boy, uh, you know, that, especially when I first got it, and first plugged it in, uh, right away, first preset, I could tell, um, the sound quality is unbelievable, really, it's, it's definitely the best synthesizer battle I ever heard. You know, the really nice, full sound, pristine stereo sound, without a doubt. Um, 
but not being used to playing it either it wasn't tracking very well at all you know um, for being a polyphonic sense now this is just my experience with it so right away I was really concerned I thought man wow did I just get taken for 300 bucks right um, and so you know I thought about I thought, man I don't, I don't know if this is worth it you know and so so I actually um, yeah the very same day I got it I thought well I'm just gonna return it you know um, and so they even gave me an RMA number and I was ready to send it back But the very next day, I thought, well, let me give it one more try. And I'm thrilled I did. Because this is what I found out. The real truth of the Maris Enzo pedal um, is this. It's not a plug-and-play kind of pedal. I mean, you really have to work with it, especially to integrate it into your system. You know? And this is also why I'm doing part one. Uh, because while I've accessed some of the sounds and things, you know, I'm fairly new to it, in fact. You know, it has four different modes, right? And I'm only going to deal with one of those modes, you know. Um, and then the other thing is, um, one of its downfalls, and people have complained about this, is very simple, is that really to access presets and those kinds of things, you need um, some kind of MIDI controller and some kind of little interface box like the Maris MIDI I.O. So I haven't delved into that yet, um, but I will be. So, um, I'm relating to you here my experience of it. Um, I love the sound. I mean, I was blown away by the sound. Seriously. I mean, it does sound absolutely like one of those huge, you know, $1,000 to $1,500 or more um, huge synthesizers. You know, full-blown Synthesizer, yet it could be controlled with a guitar and no MIDI pickup. You know, I realize there are limitations with that, you know, as far as the polyphonic sound, the tracking, and so on. Um, but unless you have, you know, a guitar with a built in pickup or something, it's really awkward, you know, to have a second cable running out of your guitar and, you know, and. If you don't have it properly hooked up, you know, I mean, installed, I guess, onto the guitar, you know, it really sucks. I mean, it could I remember the GK1 came with this little piece of tape. Yeah, thanks. Like, that's really going to hold it on, you know? And plus, it was so awkward. I mean, so cumbersome, I guess is a good word. And here, it's not like that at all. Now, I should tell you, uh, I'm a huge fan of the Eventide H9 hot sauce algorithm, which is also a synthesizer um, algorithm, you know, changes your guitar sound into a synthesizer sound. But it has one drawback, and that is <coughs> that it's monophonic. In other words, one note at a time, right? You can forget about, you know, playing two notes. And in fact, if you do play two notes, it just drops the sound an octave, you know, kind of. Um, however, it tracks really well, and I mean, I really like it. You know, and it's MIDI controlled and it's stereo and so on. And that's why I also thought, man, I don't know if I want to spend the money on this pedal, you know, I've already got the hot sauce. Well, let me tell you, uh, this is, uh, 
a much, much more expanded version of the hot sauce. It's polyphonic, so you can play several strings at a time, you know, and, and can do all kinds of sounds that are just fantastic, really amazing. And, um, I mean, there are plenty of YouTube videos, you know, um, showing the different sounds you can make and so on. Uh, but I thought I'd just give you my, my real world experience of this. Um, it comes in this really fancy box. And I must have an, an older version. Because while it's new, this particular one came with a power supply. Now on my pedal board, I already have a power supply that handles digital pedals, you know, um, Voodoo Labs digital power supply. But anyway, this one came with a power supply. But it's really fancy. I mean, to me, this is kind of like the, you know, Ferrari of pedals. You know, I mean, it's just, you know, really nicely done. And they're, they're right on the box. More than logic, uniting art and engineering. And of course, you get the mandatory um, Maris sticker. Very important here. You know, and you know the pedal is something special when it comes with a sticker. The Evan Tide H9 came with a sticker as well. So that was a good start. There's a power supply. I've never even actually opened it. But I guess they had to stop um, supplying power supplies because I guess there were tariffs or something. I don't know. So they, I saw online somewhere. Now, here's the, here's the actual uh, owner's manual. And for pedal, this complex there's just not much there really you know I mean I guess it covers everything but you would think it'd be a little more than that I don't know but it's all laid out there you know on there and uh, yeah and, and this is the one thing I, I really want to get across is this um, when you just get the pedal like I did, right? Um, don't be alarmed, right? If it doesn't do exactly what you want it to right away. And, and this was kind of the way I was, is I thought, oh, well, I'll just, you know, plug it in and be off in there. No, no, no. No, you really have to sit down and kind of learn the real basics of it and to get certain sounds and that kind of thing. Um, so it, it really went from a pedal that I was about to return crazily to now one of my favorite pedals and, and worth every penny. In fact, I'm surprised, you know, that's not as much as the SY300 and and don't get me wrong I'm not knocking the boss SY1 or SY300s at all or I guess the new one the SY1000 but I would stay clear of that thing for lots of reasons one being a thousand dollars and you have to use a crappy pickup right you have to use a freaking GK or whatever pickup MIDI pickup, they have to install on the guitar, I mean, come on, you know, but, I mean, I guess, you know, for real, um, uh, guitar synthesizer enthusiasts, you know, there are limitations 
to using this kind of technology without the pickup. You know, and I understand that. But that's why I wouldn't buy one. For my purposes, you know. I'm not putting a freaking MIDI pickup on, on my guitar. I'm just not going to do that. I've had experience with it before and it was terrible. You know, just terrible. You had to, to get it to try to track properly. You had to raise it against the strings, you know, set it just crazily. You know, they made it sound so simple until I got it home and had to install it. It was a horrible experience. So this was a refreshing experience here. Um, okay, I'm trying to think of other things to tell you about it. Um, I'm not sure if I got an older unit or not, but um, I'm not sure. I'll have to look and see. Um, but th they aren't yellow. I thought the pedal was this dark yellow color, but that's not the case at all. It's more of a gold kind of color. You know, it's a very interesting. Very interesting pedal. Um, I, I also had an expression pedal. And I guess that like to you know, um, change kind of sounds and morph, you know, not necessarily sounds, but parameters like filters and things like that. So I kind of messed around with that a little bit. Um, now let me show it to you because I mean, you know, an all talk video would be kind of not so great. So let's put it this way. I mean, I like this pedal so much that once I really kind of put it in my system, you know, because I do a lot of looping and things, and so for recording and things, and it's just, uh, suddenly it was incredible, the sound, you know, that I was getting from that, um, really, I was really impressed, really impressed, and they weren't that cheesy, you know, kind of 80s pop you know, super high-pitched, kind of sappy keyboard stuff, you know. I, I can't stand that stuff. Um, but very much kind of really cool, like Tangerine Dream type stuff, or, you know, older kind of almost 70s, 70s classic things. So I'll show it to you here. Okay, and that's just... two little, X2 little 10 inch speakers, All right, running in stereo here, and it's running through my pedal board, but everything's bypassed, um, so let me turn on the Enzo, so here we're just going to play, uh, times that it really depends I guess on the sound that you have um, how the tracking goes now I'm playing on the neck pickup here and just to give you an idea um, TV shows, you know, the old 70s special effects TV shows like Bewitched and all that, right? And here's a, just a, you can cycle between two different waveforms here. There's actually, I think, more than that, but here, here's just a different waveform, same thing. Depends.
depending on the sound, you'll get good or bad tracking, you know. And that's what I was expecting and hoping for. Now here's a Eventide H9. the huge sound. It's kind of a... stuff, right? Let's just say I play, um, I don't know, uh, D minor and A minor. That's really the beginnings for me of the Maris Enzo. And depending on the sound that you dial in affects the tracking. I guess how complicated it is. And this is why I think, for my uses anyway, um, it's so important you know, to, to be able to have presets, right? Because you can dial in sounds that work well, you know, with your playing style, with your setup, with your guitar, and that kind of thing. Um, so far, and I could be wrong because this is on the polyphonic mode, but for those kind of big, you know, huge synth sounds, those aren't really meant, you know, to be like the little SY1 or the hot sauce, you know, where it's all single notes. You know, it's not that kind of sound. I mean, it's a huge sound, a complicated sound. Um, now, um, there's another mode there that is single notes. And I'm sure that tracks really well. Um, but it, I guess it, I don't know, it's kind of strange because it really depends. I mean, from having the pedal one, you know, for such a little amount of time, I mean, I, um, it was such a blast to use, you know, that basically I recorded, a, a, you know, an entire album's worth of material. You know, using the Enzo, it, it'll end up being uh, my 350th album, you know. Um, 
It's not quite completed, but almost. And every track has the Maricenzo. And I'll put some of these examples at the end of this video. So I'm really quite pleased with it and I'm thrilled uh, uh, not to have returned it. You know? Um, the other thing I was complaining about was, oh no, the volume issue. And um, I suppose that's one thing. Um, and that's part of setting it up, too. You know, is, uh, man, when I first got it, it was like so loud. You know, it was blowing me out and blowing my speakers out. You know, and louder than my guitar, the mix was on right. So I got that ironed out a little better. You know, part of it's in the global settings and that kind of thing. Um, you know, I mean, depending on the kind of sound you're dialing up, too. I've heard some people say, we'll just put a limiter, a compressor limiter. Uh, after it, you know, that kind of thing. Or even a volume pedal, I suppose. Um, I don't know, that's something I'd, I, I have to mess with and see, you know, if I even need something like that. Because the recordings I made, I'm pretty happy with, really. Do I recommend this pedal? I would recommend this pedal with certain caveats. Okay. Um, if you just want to, you know, once in a while you're just screwing around, you know, or, you know, and just want a keyboard sound or that kind of thing, I think a Boss SY1 would be preferable. You know, to easily dial up a keyboard sound. But if you're serious about it and you really want a quality sound, you know, um, and you're doing things like recording or that kind of thing, um, then I would highly recommend it. Uh, I think there's an extra cost involved with the MIDI things, you know, um, to get the I.O. box or and a MIDI controller on top of that. But in a sense, it's also very much well worth it. Um, so that would be, you know, I think the SY1 is kind of fun in that kind of instant gratification kind of fun, you know. You just turn the pedal on, dial the knob, and there it is. And you're done. Which is cool, you know. And that's why I'm not really knocking it. But this is just not that kind of pedal at all. You know, it's very much the kind of pedal takes a very long time to learn how to use it correctly um, and getting sounds, you know, that are tracking properly and that kind of thing. Um, you know, but it's definitely not hopeless at all, you know, which I thought was the case when I very first got it and thought, oh man, I need to return this thing immediately. But no. So that's who I would recommend it to. By the same token, you know, if you're like, hey, this is an organ sound and this is a, you know, whatever, bass synthesizer sound and, and this is a flute sound or whatever, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, then it's, you'd be better off looking at the Boss series. Because I found that the Maricenzo has its own unique sounds and they don't sound, you know, like, oh, this is a, you know, whatever organ sound, or that. you know, it comes up with its own really unique sounds. Um, it's really, it's a, and it is a real synthesizer. I mean, that's the thing that really got me was the sound, and I was, um, especially when I was playing and recording and things, um, and I, I wish I could do a better demo, but it's kind of late, and I have, you know, neighbors, <laughs> and that's the thing, to, to record and things, and, you know, to turn it up pretty loud, because those tube amps, you know, at low volume, and it sounded like great. 
Um, so that's why I'll play you some of these recordings that I've done. And this is just with no MIDI and not really knowing uh, exactly what I was doing with the pedal. I was just twisting knobs, you know, and try a random sound. Because, as you know, all my music's improvised on the spot. So basically, I was just trying to, you know, dial up some knobs and play the sound, you know, and then um, do some looping and improvising and that kind of thing. That's how I came up with these recordings. You know, now I know there are other YouTube videos where people have, you know, worked on this. Uh, they're recording for a real long time and that kind of thing. Um, <laughs> it's not exactly the case for me. I basically, but some of them I really, I really like the sounds. I mean, and, and, and really, um, for the price, um, it's. It's definitely inexpensive in a way. You know, when you compare it to a, a full-size keyboard, and it really has those kinds of sounds almost. You know, you know, it's just not for that. So I really think Maris has done a really good job. Now, I suppose that I, if there are any cons about it, I'd say one of obviously the presets. You know, and that's what everybody. Complains about. I wish I had a little screen, you know, with presets, and also showing you the settings and that kind of thing, you know. And what I've discovered too is, man, I was twisting like the filter knob quite drastically, you know. And what I realized is that every little, you know, budging it just a tiny bit changes the sound completely. That's why it has so many sounds. You know, that's the other thing I discovered about it. Um, you know, and in part two, I mean, I'm going to go through the whole MIDI experience, you know, going through the presets and, and using the editor, you know, we'll see how that goes through too. Um, but just the sounds of the pedal, I think, are really nice. Uh, I've heard some people are also using SY1, you know, um. I, I don't know, I just, for a $200 pedal, you know, with the SY1, and with no MIDI and being mono, is not, not all that appealing, really, you know, and I don't want to spend $700 for the SY300, you know, and, and maybe it has great sounds, but for what I've heard, it sounds a little dated and a little cheesy, sorry. I suppose if you go in there and program. And I mean, I, you know, I just to screw around, I messed around with the arpeggiator mode, which is fantastic, too. And, the, you know, the other modes are really interesting. Um, I think for me, trying to learn each mode one at a time would be probably the best way to do it, you know. Um, and, and that's the one thing about the Enzo is, um, you know, if you just want to quickly dial in a sound, that's really hard to do, you know, um, especially if you ever want to recall that sound. I guess you can save a preset and one, one, <laughs> you know. Um, so probably people who have this pedal and will keep this pedal We'll probably get a MIDI controller for it at some point. You know. Here, I'm going to put a couple of tracks here, or at least parts of them. Um, from what I've been able to mess around with, the um, Maricenzo, and these are just sounds, you know, just from twisting knobs. And I thought, oh, that sounds okay. And then, um, Improvising over that, you know, doing loops and that kind of thing. Okay, um, so I guess that's it for now. All right, see you next time. Okay, bye.